Rock. I want to hear you, Dyke. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty Tower of refuge and strength Let every breath All that I am Never cease to worship you Shout to the Lord all the earth Let us sing Power and majesty Praise to the King Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. This next song is called Speak, O Lord. Um, when I sing it, I like to sing it as a prayer. So. Speak, O oh Lord, as we come to you to receive the food.
of your purity. Cause our faith to rise, cause our eyes to see your majestic love and authority. Words of power that can never fail, let their truth prevail over Grasp the heights of your plans for us. Truth sun change from the dawn of time that will let go down through eternity. And by grace will stand on your promises. And by faith will walk as you walk with Speak, O Lord, till your church is built and the earth is filled with your Come. 
conquered the grave. Thank you guys, uh, really nice. Um, welcome everyone this morning to Step Closer. And um, we'll just make a couple of, oh, first of all, this is like a kind of a weird question, but it's gonna help us a little bit. Those of you who are an R&R &R people, how many of you would be attending this coming Friday? I guess I should say anybody who's a regular that wouldn't be out of town or anything? Susie's out of town? Well, then we have to cancel R&R. &R. Can't, have, can't have it without Susie and Tom. 
All right, so we're only two people, Bruce, that are missing. I think I might be sick. You might be sick? Okay, well. We're having a turkey dinner. We're having a Thanksgiving turkey dinner. Okay. Uh, all right, we'll mark you down as sick, David. All right. Okay, so uh, just, you know, that's that's the first announcement. If you are not uh, familiar with that, if you're just strictly Step Closer people, remember that on Friday nights at 7 p.m., we host a wonderful get-together here called r and &R, and uh, we serve uh, dinner, and it's uh, good, too. And then we also have uh, some great music and uh, some uh, a message. So uh, those of you who were here last Friday saw a whole bunch of good food, good music, and good message. So that's what we do here every Friday night. So we'd love to have you here. And also, uh, prior to that, there's an AA meeting over in the upper room uh, from 6 to 7, hosted by uh, Rick and Bev Dyer. So that's a good thing to go to also. Uh, you can make it a whole evening. Um, and then uh, we have a couple of Bible studies that are recovery-oriented that I want to bring to your attention. One is on Tuesday night, and uh, it is uh, from the Life Recovery Bible. And we are in the middle of a 30-week series of uh, devotionals uh, based on the serenity prayer and uh, it's been a real blessing for all of us so if you want to attend that and you have not been doing so you can get the uh, you can get um, a link from Bruce um, or my or myself and also um, on Thursday night same thing by the way both of these Bible studies are co-ed and uh, Andy um, uh, I think he's been doing this for what about 90 years, Andy, something like that. Uh, 90, and uh, yeah, so he's been doing it a long time, and uh, that's on Thursday nights. Um, what's that? We are not going to meet on Thursday. Oh, because it's Thanksgiving. Well, that's not a reason, is it? <laughs> I guess it is a reason. Yeah, okay, everybody will be asleep from tryptophan. Uh, um, all right, um, showers. Uh, this is a, a, a ministry um, that I think Pam really heads up. It's been very successful. I come by here to go to my office oftentimes, and there's a lot of people doing this. So it's a really great ministry. And we have those available today from 4 to 6, followed by a, a dinner. And then on weekdays, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 8 to 11. That's very popular. And so if you're in need of something like that, or you know someone who is, uh, we invite you to do that. Um, also, uh, we are not passing the offering basket these days uh, because of uh, COVID. So we have a box over here, a little metal box on the table, and we'd appreciate your gifts and offerings. And let me pray for that right now. Our Grace Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for this ministry, and uh, this is your ministry, and we want to support it in every way that we can, and we just pray that you would bless us this morning as we give back to you what you have so richly given to us, and we ask that in Jesus' name, amen. amen. And uh, we are going to uh, have communion today, and uh, so if you have not gotten the elements, um, we have uh, someone passing them out, so... If you have not received them, if you want to put up your hand, we'll get one to you. Here's some back here. And Susie's going to do that for us. Okay. Also, uh, we believe in prayer here. And, uh, it, because it, and the reason we believe in prayer is because God answers prayer. And uh, we have seen so many instances over the years of, of powerful, powerful answers to prayer. And we continue to see that in this ministry. So uh, our uh, prayer warrior, Miss Virginia, has the prayer cards. So if you would like to have prayer this week for a need that you may have or a loved one may have, if you put up your hand, uh, Virginia will get a, a prayer card to you. And then uh, we will pray over those uh, during the week. Um, so um, I don't think there's anything else that's pressing right now. But I want to say that, uh, you know, we are uh, just so excited about being in the book of Romans. Everyone enjoying Romans? I mean, it's really good. And, you know, we've been talking about doing this book for a long, long time. And we finally got around to it. And it's just been a real blessing to all of us. And it's, I've said this many times, but I encourage you. Um, at your leisure to read the entire book of Romans. One of the reasons be because it has such a powerful recovery message. 
Um, and that's one of the reasons that we chose uh, this book. So at this time, um, I want to bring up Jeff Wallach, who's going to read our scripture this morning. All right. Uh, Jeff Wallach, alcoholic. Lord uh, Jesus. Uh, this is Romans chapter 4, verses 13 through 25. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For it is written that the adherents of the law who are not to be their heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but there is no law, there is no, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith. In order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offsprings, not only to the adherent of, of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In hope, he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations, as he has been told. So shall, so shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the, the barrenness of, Sarah, of Sarah's womb. No belief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. Fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will, it will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Make sure I don't kill myself over here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, wow, that, that, that's quite a mouthful of scripture there, isn't it? That is. Um, but Romans is just so full of um, things. I'm going to say today, this morning, that I want to pray first. <laughs> uh, Lord, uh, thank you for this opportunity to, to speak your word. Lord, I pray that you would empower the words that come out of my mouth but from by the Holy Spirit, Lord, that it wouldn't be my words, but your words. Um, thank you for the time I got to spend in your word, wrestling with it um, over and over. And uh, Lord, I just pray that I could be clear and concise with your word and pray these things in Jesus name. So what I was going to say is that um, one of the things that in this chat, in this part of the of Romans, actually all of Romans, I think faith is probably the key word today for today's uh, passage. And faith is used so many times in the Bible. Um, so that, that, that tells you how important it is, right? Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can find my thing. It says, the word faith appears 336 times in the King James Version, 458 times in the New International Version, 389 in the New King James, and 521 in the Good News Bible. So faith is used a lot. And, and um, I think that um, that's what, you know, that's what... The thing is, I tried all my whole life to try to live up to God's standards, right? To try to do the right thing and do, be good and all those things. I think we've all done that, right? Yeah. And, um, but it, it, I failed every time, you know? And, and so I thought I was a lost cause because at some point I thought that the scales were so, so down on the bad part that no matter how much good I could do, I would never be able to even the scales um, or tip them back the other way. Um, so... Um, <laughs> It's great news that it doesn't rely on my being able to follow these rules, to follow the commandments, because none of us can do it. Only one of them was able to do it, and he was crucified, right, um, for our sake. So faith is the key to this uh, section of Scripture. Romans is so deep. Now, when I saw, you know, 13 verses 13 to 25, it's only 12 verses or 13 verses, but it's packed. You know, it's packed with things. And the thing about Paul... When you're, when you're reading his word the way he writes, you constantly have to go back to what he said before, right? He's constantly rehashing things. And um, so tonight's, or today, today, today's reading, actually, you know, I forgot my water. Today's uh, title of today's message is uh, The Hope 
hope in God's promises. Right? So, um, and that's the key. Hope um, is something that we can look forward to, something that we we want to happen, right? There's something, but the, the cool thing here is that we can rely on what uh, what God says. <clears throat> Thank goodness, because if it was up to me, I'd be in trouble. So, um, I think I'm going to start by reading the first couple verses here. Um, my first point here is that God's promises are fulfilled by faith. Um, they, that, that's the only way they can be fulfilled is, is by faith. So verse 13 says this, Romans 4 verse 13. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So right off the bat, he talks about that we aren't justified with God by following the rules. That's, that's, I mean, in plain terms, that's exactly what he's saying. We are not made right with God by trying to act correctly because it's impossible for us to do that. Um, has anybody, anybody here been successful at following all God's thing? Okay, good. I was going to make it sure I'm not talking to, uh, to somebody that's, that has been able to do that. That's perfect. That's right. <laughs> Although sometimes I think I'm perfect, but my wife <laughs> always reminds me that I'm very far from it, you know, but... Uh, I was wondering, see, I can misdirect, put all the intention on her. Um, so actually my first, you know, my first point here is, is God's promises are fulfilled by faith and only by faith. Um, so it didn't come through the law, um, but through the righteousness of faith. And now when, you, when you're talking about Abraham, he, he was counted as righteous before the law ever came into existence. Over 400 years before the law came into existence, he claimed righteousness he claimed that abraham was righteous before the law ever came into effect right before the law was ever gift given so that tells you that righteousness doesn't come through faith because uh abraham already had it yes you're gonna say something what's that did i did i say it backwards i'm sorry i i wouldn't be surprised if i did um let me re let me reword that uh, <laughs> yeah i'm telling you you're gonna need a sip I don't even remember what I just said. All right. So the, the law never came into being until 400 years later after God deemed Abraham as righteous. That makes sense? So it was his faith, his belief, his trust, his confidence, his reliance on God is what made him righteous in God's eyes. Right? And the same is, can be true for us. The same is true for us. So, so... The promise to Abraham that his offspring uh, that his offspring would be the heir of the world didn't come through the law. It didn't come through us following the rules, him following the rules, anybody following the rules. Verse 14 says, For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. <laughs> so if it was following the rules, if it was right conduct, right standard of, of behavior, um, then there's no reason for faith to be involved, right? It means that we can we can do this. We can follow the rules, right? And we find out real quickly we can't. I know I can't. I can't follow rules I made for myself, <laughs> much less the Ten Commandments, right? Oh, I swear I'm not going to do that this time. And, um, you know, we went to a wedding last night, and I've been eating really good. We went to a wedding. Well, what the heck? Let's eat what I want today. And, I, and so um, I can't follow. Hey, but you know what? I'm back on track today. <laughs> I didn't eat a whole cow. I just ate the nice big plate. It was Mexican food. It was a Mexican theme, but uh, no, it's not a relapse. It's, <laughs> I am made righteous by my faith in my belief that I'm going to get back on track tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> wow, this is so fun, Peter. I'm sorry. Food is yes. We have to have food, but anyway. <laughs> Bottom line, that God's promises are fulfilled by faith. So, the law cannot bring us into the blessings of God's promises. It's not because the law is bad. It's because we are unable to keep it. That's why. That's why faith makes us righteous. If it was by following the law, we would be doomed. And fortunately, we're not doomed. Um, we were at one time. I was doomed at one time. As long as I tried to do things in my own in my own thinking, in my own way, and trying to live life the way I thought it was right, correct? 
Um, the, the Word of God is great at this. I mean, especially when you're when I'm getting ready to teach. Oh, my goodness. I'm convicted all the time. Just like, oh, my goodness, I'm teaching this. And, and do I live this? Um, I try. Um, I'm not 100% at it, but I am progressing. God is changing me. I can see the difference in me. The man that I am today is much different than the one I, that started. <laughs> um, and actually, to be quite honest, it's not the same man. It's a completely different man that stands in front of you today. So he goes on to say, for if it is the adherents of the law who are to be heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. That means the promise is no good, faith is worthless. That's not the case, fortunately for us, right? Then he goes on in verse 15 to say, for the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. Oh, wow, what does that mean? That means, does that mean that if I don't know about the law, that, um, that I'm okay? I, I, it doesn't matter if I follow God's standards? Fortunately, unfortunately, that's not what it says. Um, it would be nice, but uh, it doesn't matter because I don't need that. I don't need to um, um, try to follow the rules anymore. I already know I'm going to fail at them. And that's why I need Jesus. That's why we need faith. That's why we need God. That's why we need to trust in him because we can't do it. And I think everybody inherently, every human being wants to be the person that God called them to be. I think everyone does deep down want to be because because we walk around going there's something wrong there's absolutely something wrong with me when i walk through a room you know i used to walk through a room feeling totally defective everyone's looking at me they can see every fault i have and um i don't do that anymore because my righteousness or my my worth um and my value doesn't come from what other people think of me it comes from god Amen. and it gives me a, allows me to walk through a room without having to to keep checking myself right but the, the point is, is that all of us, we walk along and go, there's something wrong. There's something missing here. There's something missing. That's why I fill it with food and drugs and alcohol and shopping and power and you name it. And sex and drugs and rock and roll and all those things. And I, and I tried to fill uh, myself with all those things and uh, to no avail. Didn't ever brought me any peace at all. None at all. The only thing that's brought me peace is, is my faith in Christ. It's the only thing that's ever brought peace in my life. Um, and even then, it's not always peace all the time because I'm constantly turning back to my old way. Yes, Kelly? Well, I, I think that a lot of people, they don't want to come to God or to follow God because they don't want to, they want to be able to pull the, the word like, oh, I didn't know. I That's didn't right. know I was doing wrong kind That's of right. thing. And so they don't want to come to God. They don't want to study the word. And so they want to be able to live by their own That's right. rules. That's what I wanted to do. You know, I said, I can handle this. I can do this. But, but here's the thing is that, I thought that, oh my God, I'm going to have to give up so much, it's not worth it. I'd rather have my way and have fun, and but it's it's the opposite. As soon as you give up, as soon as I gave up control, surrendered to the Lord, gave him my life, one second, Joe, um, as soon as that happened, I got a life. I got a real life that I never knew existed, that was, that was possible, right? I tried everything to make myself have a good life. Nothing worked, but my faith in Christ started to give me a life. And, and when I started to give away my life, then I got a life. That, that's, that's part of it. Yeah, Andre, let me, Joseph and then Andre. Joseph. Yeah, to, talking to our relatives who are religious or Christian by, by birth, they said, oh, I, I didn't do nothing, you know. Uh, maybe you need the Lord, but I am a good, a good, I don't steal, I don't do that. Yeah. Uh, and this verse is, in verse, uh, there's no law, no transition. Like if there is, if there is in this trans, uh, 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 no stop sign, if I pass, I will not get the ticket because no stop sign, no law for it. But when they put stop sign, uh, then if I don't stop there, I will get the ticket. So the same thing, the law came is to give us wrath, yeah. not salvation. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, so, so if you run the stop sign. There's consequences is what you're saying, right? Okay, just just check it. I think. But if there's no stop sign there, right? There's still consequences. You can still die. No, but there's still consequences, right? Yeah, yeah. So no matter, regardless if you know you're supposed to stop or not, you're still endangering yourself. Yes, Andre. Hey, Bruce, we're talking about faith. But I want to say this, man. I was getting high all the time. All right. I left my mother's house in Detroit with three dollars, and I was driving to Park Avenue. All right, God didn't just say, hey, well, you know, he said, come as you are. I, I came all the way from Detroit, Michigan with $3 of gas. It made all the way back here. Bay Bridge, I had a half a tank of gas. 
What, what, what kind of car was it again? A front end. I had one of those. It was a big old boat, right? Yeah, it was like a... Uh, yeah, a beer could park. Uh, it was, right, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, it made it all the way back here, and people still don't believe that to the day. I believe so it. I'm You're here. So I meet strangers, brother. Police give me money to get out of town. That's right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew I could get you out of town, but give you your money. Man. We'll talk after. How's that sound? <laughs> Anyway, you know, I really love this family because I get to be real. I don't have to be. Uh, this is awesome. Thank you. So, so like he's saying is that that um, the law brings wrath. Where there is no law, there is no transgression. But here's the thing. We're still doomed. If we don't know the law, we don't know we're breaking the law. We're still doomed. We're still not saved. We're still, um, we're still going to be eternally separated from God until we come to Christ. Until we come to faith in God, right? So for the for the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That's why it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring. Not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. That's quite a mouthful there. So couple things about wrath um in our ability to keep the law means that it becomes essentially a vehicle of god's wrath towards us right so um god uses his wrath to get our attention so that we realize we need a savior that we need we need to reach out to god um c.s lewis says this very wisely that the whole world of the whole world consists of two kinds of people those who say to god thy will be done and those to whom god is saying thy will be done <laughs> that is wrath right we're saying i don't i'm i'm not i'm not saying thy will be done i'm saying I, my will be done that brings wrath from god because he wants us to do it his way right he says when God removes the restraints, we begin to fall apart. The stop signs. When he removes the stop signs, Joseph, just like you were saying. Therefore, wrath always results in the disintegration of the human personality. Emptiness, meaningless, loneliness, and worthlessness possess us because we feel abandoned and lost. This is so true. This really um, hit home with me. We do not know where, or we do not know where to turn, and despair and depression press us down on us heavily. That's the point when faith is possible for us. When when we go, you know what, my way is not working. There is a way out for me. Is when the, when the pressure of being under wrath happens, right? Because we're all under wrath. As long as we're in our sins, we're under wrath. The only thing that keeps us from being under wrath is is Jesus Christ and our faith in Him, right? Our faith in God through Christ. So this says that. Faith, um, you remember James 2, 26 says, faith without works is dead, right? We all know that, right? That means that um, if we claim to have faith and we don't have an impact on our the people that we influence around us, that we're not impacting uh, people for the good, that we're not having fruit in our lives, we're not doing that. Our faith is just words. It's, it doesn't mean anything. But that is how we, that's how we, uh, that's the gauge of our faith is the changes that we can make in others that the influence we can give to others yes Tom. So, the, so the works is not doing good things the works is actually bringing other people to christ but and, and, and yes and no the point is the point is is that um what was the point no faith without <laughs> works is dead that means if you claim to have faith i believe in christ i'm a christian but you are not having good works come out of you because we don't have to actually go out and try to do good works. If we have faith in Christ and we surrender to him, that will be a result of our faith in him. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. So that's the first thing we start with is faith in him. The more that we point to him, the more that we rely on him, the more influence we're going to have around the people around us, right? So that's what he means by faith without works is dead. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're not saved by good works, but we're saved to do good works. There you go. And, and it's really just, it, it's not we do good works so that we can prove our faith. It's our faith. Good works are going to come out of our faith just as a natural 
um, reaction to that, just as that's going to happen. Um, I didn't go, hey, I'm going to run around and do good things for people. No, I, I was lost and broken and I needed some, I needed rescuing. And when I, when I reached out my hand, he did it. And then work started to come out of me. You know, I mean, Ed asked me to go to Pakistan. When I, yeah, I'm never going to Pakistan. You're out of your mind. A year later, I'm going to go, oh, yeah, I'll go. Like, what? What happened there, right? It, it's the good works came out of my faith. The faith I had in God, those came out of that. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah, Bruce and, uh, and you all, I, I, I think the word you're looking for is illumination. You know, because if we're the light, then they want to know what what what's sparking that from deep within. I yeah. Mean, illumination. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to show this illumination your works or your acts right yeah. okay who okay. stamped you on your but head that illumination <laughs> don't ask me to spell it but illumination illumination well, i understand what you're saying okay all right so 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 what i'm saying is it's like a it's like if you go to take a temperature right you, you, you put a thermometer in your mouth to see what your temperature is right if you want to see the temperature of your faith look at your works right if all you do is come to church and sit in the pew all and that's all you do and you're not influencing other people in your life there's no fruit there your faith is dead if there's not some works there so so it tells us it's a gauge of how our faith is doing right um so but i would also say this you know i was listening to christmas songs the other day and um my wife reminded me lucy reminded me of this this morning because remember he says you better not tell you better not cry you better not pout i'm telling you why santa claus is coming to town and there's a line in there where it says so be good for goodness sakes that is living under the law be good for goodness sakes right it's like oh if if you if you're good you'll get some presents from santa right that's the idea behind it so just be good for goodness sake say no right those kind of things that that be good for goodness sakes no i can't be good for goodness sakes i have to have faith to be good for goodness sakes right it's up it's not up to me to be good for goodness sake because i can't do it it's not possible for me to do it. The only way I can do it is in the indwelling of Christ in me comes out from that, right? So I would say this in essence says works without faith is dead, right? Not only is faith without works dead, but works without faith is dead. Because I could do a bunch of really good things, do a bunch of good things for God and look really good to everybody. But, but if I don't have faith, in him, if I don't trust and have my confidence and rely on him for everything, um, these works are useless. We have to have faith. So they both go hand in hand. You have to have them both. They don't, they don't work, they don't work uh, by themselves, right? So have you ever heard that works without faith is dead? Faith without works is dead. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to go to my grave believing that. So if we are relying on the works, on our works, to bring us in right standing with God, our faith is dead, right? If I think that it's up to me to do it. That's the great news. It's not up to me. It's up to him. I can give it to him. Ed taught me a long time ago that, you know, when he's trying to make changes in his life, he's trying and trying and trying. Finally, he just says, you know what? I give up. It's up to you, God. Here, it's, it's your problem. I'm giving it to you. You asked me to give you these problems. And, and he takes it. And I, when he first time, I said, fool, what's he talking about? <laughs> you know, I didn't say that. But kind of like, just like, what's he? Seriously, all the things that I've heard people tell me, you know, people that are smarter and more mature than me, every time I scoffed at it, they always come, comes around later that they were right, right? So I, I don't scoff at anyone anymore. I, I, when somebody says something, I'm, I'm gonna take it at face value and I'm gonna investigate. I don't just, you know, like they say at the end of the big book, it says uh, nothing will hold us in everlasting ignorance more than content prior to investigation. So if somebody tells me something I'm going to go look, investigate. I'm not going to go, no, 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 I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear you. Just close my mind. I have an open mind now. All right, paper's flying. So here's the thing, is that faith is related to grace in the same way works is related to law, right? When you're living under the law, you're trying to do that by works. You're trying to do the right thing. That's living under the law. So faith is related to grace because faith, is what gives us grace okay it, it's really like like wait wait a minute what's going on here so to speak technically we are not saved by faith we are saved by god's grace but grace is appropriated through faith okay so grace we get and and what does grace mean anybody have an idea what grace means there you go man you got my acronym 
God's riches at Christ's expense, right? So we get all the riches of God and we don't have to be perfect because he makes us per he makes us righteous with him when we have our trust in him and reliance on him. Um, I'm telling you, I am wholly inadequate to be up here teaching God's word. I totally, every time I go up to teach, I'm like, I am inadequate, God. And he, and he always tells me, no, I will be your adequacy. I will make it come out right. And I don't have to worry anymore. I, I, I still do, though. I still, you know, <laughs> out of all this time, God's equipped me um, to do this. I still doubt because that's because I'm struck. I'm, I'm, you know why I doubt? Because I'm thinking it's up to me. I'm thinking it's, it's all on my shoulders, but it's not true. Well, if I take it on my shoulders, I can do that, but I don't have to. I can give it to God and he gives me the adequacy. He gives me the words. I will go away from here probably tomorrow when we go, I have no idea what I said yesterday. <laughs> um, I prepare, I do all the pre preparation I can do. Um, sometimes I get to the point where I feel like I'm over-prepared, right? And, and I come in all cocky and then it turns out terrible, right? But when I, when I feel inadequate and I know I'm inadequate and I make him my adequacy, he gives me what I need. He always does. Always does. So in verse 16 says this. That's why it depends on faith in order that the promises may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only the adherent of the law, to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So it says here, it is guaranteed also, it even says here that it is guaranteed to the adherent to the law. Problem is, there's no one is adherent to the law. There's no one, right? So that means that's, that it, it, it doesn't, there's no one can do this. So we have to have faith. Faith is the key. Faith is the total key here. So uh, God's riches at Christ's expense. I really love that. So it is the law that helps us come to grace, right? It's the law that gives, puts wrath on us. Gives, we feel the brokenness. Tom, hang on. Let's let get the microphone to you. Um, so it's the law that even though it does bring wrath to me, but that's a good thing because it makes me reach out to God. Yes, Tom, over here. Okay, um, Hold I, on, get the microphone. I, I just got confused because okay. I thought what you said, I thought you said something different before. Um, grace is what brings us to faith, but faith is the key, you said, but I thought grace right. was the faith, it was the key. It is, but the law brings us to faith. That brings us to, the, in other grace. words, no, Never mind. To, no, because faith brings us to grace. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Here I come. I, I understand Tom's confusion. Okay. Grace is something that God does. That's right. Faith is something that we have. God doesn't have faith. We have faith. So we must have faith, which is an action or a belief in the grace of God to be saved. Right. So there is something for us to do, which is to assent to what God has done for us. Yeah, to surrender to him, to Sorry, give him yes. our life. That, that's accepting yes. the grace. Yes. So nothing that's right. happens if we don't accept the grace. That's right. But, but so how do we come to faith? We believe in God, right? We believe, our belief comes, goes into God. That's where the grace comes from, right? This is turning into a Chinese puzzle. No, it's, it's not. Though. Is anyone else really confused here? No, I get it. No, just what it, no, it's... I want to make sure everyone's clear. Yes. One of the key verses in Ephesians 2.8, it says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. That's right. That's right. So maybe the question, because I said it's the law that leads us, that helps us come to grace through faith. Does that sound better? So in other words, the law is what makes me realize I, I don't have what it takes. I can't meet the standard, right? So the faith... Lord, I have faith in you, I believe in you, and I trust you. That's when the grace comes in, and I'm no longer, and now I'm justified, right? And I'm no longer under wrath anymore, because I've been justified through faith. Is that, that clear? As muddy water. <laughs> yes, Jay. Could um, faith be considered surrender? I mean, because in our own whatever, we want to try to do good, whatever, but we can't. So we come to that point where we cannot can't do it um, faith is like surrender to God's grace to his gift so that we can accept it so surrender is saying okay Lord I can't do this you go for it that's showing that I have no faith in myself anymore but I have total I have faith in God that he's the only one who can bring me to the grace 
to save me. Right. But I, I would say that that surrender. Um, when we have faith, when we believe, when we trust, we put our faith and confidence in something, right? Then we have faith, right? That so so then we surrender, right? We we have to have belief in Him first before we can surrender to Him. That makes sense, right? Yeah. 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 Hold on. Hold on. That's okay. Yes, Susie. I just wanted to say um, this topic is so important because this these scriptures are why so many cults are formed. Um, so the reason we have confusion is because it's so intense in what we're learning right now. This is what has separated my sister-in-law, she's Jehovah Witness now, from us. They believe they have to go knock on doors. They believe it, yet they're doing it without the Holy Spirit, which is so burdensome and my, my heart bleeds for them. But so, we're the only religion that believes that we're saved by faith and not work. So the reason we're all confused is that's why the whole world is confused on this very subject. So it's yeah. a very intense scriptures right now. So, so faith is faith. No, faith is what we do. Grace is what we get from faith. That's basically it, right? No, hold on. Hold on, Joe. Hold, hold on. I, I, I need to move on because I'm losing a little control here. Uh, um, Tell you what, real quickly, go ahead and then I'm going to move on. Tell me what's, what's the faith had to do with the conversion of Paul? He had nothing. He was going to kill Christians and by grace, God, you know, put, so he don't have faith in Christ. So by God wake him up like most of right. our experience. I don't want God. I don't have faith in God. That's right. But he gave me that faith. That's right. That's Even right. The faith is given. That's right. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. Andre, real quickly, uh, and then move I on. Also, faith is uh, having discernment. It's not falling for the banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're not falling for the banana in yeah. the tailpipe. Yeah, so this is some really deep stuff here. And it's really worth digging into it yourself. Because if, if you disagree or don't, you know, don't rely on me telling you. Look for yourself and make sure that what I'm saying is correct, okay? Um, I, and I'm a human being and I can make mistakes. Um, but So I think it was just the wording. So it's the law that helps us come to faith, right? It's 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 the pressure of not being able to, to live up to the law that brings us to reach out to God because we can't handle it, right? We can't do it. We can't handle the truth. So the law condemns, grace enables, right? When grace comes in, it guarantees the promise. <laughs> Said simply. Um, so, so he also says in here, those of us who share the faith of Abraham share in the promises of God. Because Abraham is the father of our faith, right? He said, I'm going to make m many nations after you. And he did. And we're part of that nation. We're, gra we're grafted into that nation because of our belief, right? Only because of our belief. That's the only thing that makes us right with God is our belief in him. Um, nothing else we do. Um, the only thing like Julie was saying is that we have, our action is to believe. Our action is to believe, is to have faith in it. So, Second part here in verse 17, it says, As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. So my second point, first point was, anybody remember? God's promises are fulfilled by faith. Okay, second point. Yes. With God, nothing is impossible. Yeah. Nothing is impossible with God, right? doesn't make it easy. No, it does not. It does not make it easy. But with God, nothing's impossible. If he tells us he's going to do something, we can believe that he's going to do it. Right? We can believe. Why? Because he's done everything up to this point that he said he was going to do. For me, you have faith in me. I'm going to save you, Bruce. I'm going to change you. I'm going to make you into a new creation. That's what he did. Um, so with God, nothing is impossible. Matthew 9, 1926, Jesus said this. With man, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. Same in Mark 9, 33. Jesus said, all things are possible for one who believes. So nothing is impossible for God. Now he's telling, <laughs> so it says here, uh, as it's written, I have made you the father of many nations. And that's from Genesis 17, 5, where he said, when he changed Abram's name to Abraham, in uh, Genesis 17, 5, it said, no longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the father 
of a multitude of nations. So he told him ahead of time what, what, what he was going to do, right? So here's the key. So he says, uh, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, going back to Genesis 75, in the presence of the God in whom he believed. And I think the key here is, is what is the object of his faith? What is the object of our faith? That's where it comes in. His object of his faith is God, the creator of the universe. That's the object of his faith. We all have faith in something, right? So he's talking about the, in, the God in whom Abraham believed. He's, he made him the, the father of all nations. So it really matters what or who is the object of your faith. Am I the object of my faith? Who's the object of your faith? If it's God, you got everything you need. There's nothing more you need if he's the object of your faith. But we put faith in a lot of things. Put a, you know, we put our faith in, uh, okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be equal here, Biden or Trump. Don't put your faith in any of them. Any president, any government. Putin or whoever you want to talk about. Our faith shouldn't be in them. Our faith is in the creator of the universe. Aye. That's what it needs to be. So he says, in whom Aye. he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. And that brings up me to like Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Right? calls into existence the things that did not exist that's what god does that's what our god does he speaks and it exists i am that i am right it's um amazing but even in the new you know even in the new testament in second corinthians five seventeen, he says this therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation the old has passed away behold the new has come so it's not a new improved bruce or david or Dale it's a brand new creation something that never existed before just like the creation of the earth that never existed before he spoke it to an existence when we come to faith we become a brand new creation brand new and we, and we don't like we don't we don't believe that for the most part there's going look I still have all these warts and zits and do all these crazy hurtful things um but that's not the new creation the new creation is incapable of corruption the new creation is perfect and that's who we really are the new creation that comes into existence when we come to faith do you believe that you all believe that yeah oh, yes. so, okay good yeah. Praise the Lord. amen amen, amen. Uh, whew, too much coffee this morning i think so so he said yeah not enough so he says this, who gives life to the dead, calls into existence the things that do not exist. Verse 18, in hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of nations as he had been told. As he had been told, so shall your offspring be. And this was really confusing to me because now he's going back to something that he heard in Genesis 15. <laughs> so it was before this, because this is what he said in Genesis 15:5. And he brought him outside because Abraham was going, or actually at this time he was still Abram in verse 15, in uh, chapter 15. And a Abram's going, how do I know this promise is going to happen? Because he's been waiting like 10 years, I think, up to this point. Um, and, and he's going, how am I going to know this is true, God? How am I going to do this? And God tells him, look towards the heaven and number the stars if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. That give you goosebumps? Gives gives me goosebumps. So shall your offspring be, and we're his offspring. That's the most exciting part here. So shall your offspring be. Verse nineteen. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. Anybody know what he's referring to there? That's right. But but what, what's he referring to? What, what did he have to believe? That's right. So, remember he was he was promised to be a multitude of all nations, right? But he had no kids. He can't without kids. You can't, right? He, he was saying, asking God, who's what's going to happen? I'm going to have somebody in my household is going to be my heir. And, 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 and God said, um, he said, uh, earlier he said so shall your offspring be so he's going how's this going to happen i'm 100 years old my wife is barren how's she going to have children how's this going to happen how am i going to be a father of all nations yes 
Yes. Oh, sorry. And some, and somehow it seems like he's foreshadowing, like you're dead in your trespasses, like you're dead. You're. He said he's good as dead, and it's like we have to die in Christ in a way. That's right. Well, he said here he believed in hope. He believed against hope. Right. So he 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 he's in an impossible situation, but he's like, I'm trusting you, God. I don't know how this is going to happen, but I'm going to trust you. I mean, how often do we do that, right? I mean, I think Eric, when he was teaching on Abraham months ago, he was talking about how Abraham's faith grew over time because God was faithful to him, right? He blew it, and then he saw God be faithful. He blew it again, but he learned each time. That's what happens with me. That's what happens with us. As we, as we blow it and, God, and we go back to God, we grow in our faith a little bit more each time. And when God tells us something... We can believe in it because he's done it so many times. I don't know. I can go back from the time I crawled into r, &R 18 years ago and go, oh, my goodness. What has he done? I mean, it wasn't overnight, but little by little, he's made these changes. It's, 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 it's um, amazing what God does. He takes a dead person like me and brings me to life. But by, by all accounts, I was dead at that point, pretty much dead. I was breathing and walking and breathing but that was it i was just existing now i have a life now i have a wife now i have a wonderful family i just have everything i could possibly ask for at this point right yes thanks for all and that's possible for everybody not just me so so it looked impossible that how am i going to have a kid but he's trusted god anyway he just i'm going to trust you i'm going to trust you um it even says in verse 20 no unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of god but he grew strong in his faith as he gave, gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Amen. Fully convinced. Are you fully convinced that God, God can do what he promised? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. That's what I want to hear. Thank you. <laughs> because he proves it over and over again. And that's right. And, and listen to this. I, I, don't, I can't remember where I got this quote from. It says, this, is, this perfectly illustrated with God speaking to Abraham about nations coming from him and his wife, even though they had no children and were on or were beyond the age of childbearing. The God who creates out of nothing could give children and eventually nations to Abraham and Sarah. Right? That's and he believed this because the God of the universe, the one that speaks things into existence, that makes things brand new, that takes the death and takes the dead and brings it to life. I mean, I've seen a whole bunch of, I see a bunch of people here that were dead right along with me that are, have come to life. And I get to worship with you guys every Sunday. It's just, it's like, um, I'm going to start crying. I got to stop because it's so, it's, uh, let the, let the tears flow. I know, man. Anybody here for my wedding? Was anybody there for my wedding? Talk about tears flowing. So for, that's right. Well, it's not like, a, not like for 10 minutes. But anyway, so, but, I presided at the ceremony. You were crying a lot. That's right. And you know why? It's because, because it was such an impossibility that God was going to bring me from, from where I was to work. I mean, just that day, seeing Lucy come in on the horse um, and, and just like, this is like something I never thought was ever going to happen, right? I thought that's like the furthest thing from, from reality, you know? Yeah, well, my eyes were sweating. No, that too, because it was real hot. But no, but but it wasn't. It was tears of joy, is what it was, right? It was tears of joy. It was like, look what God did. Look what God changed. That's why I was crying because I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. Ooh, I'm about to cry again. Um, that's okay. Thank you. Um, so this last. So the first point was anybody remember? Oh, gay. You're good. Thank you. Second point, nothing is impossible for God. that's right. With God, nothing is impossible. <laughs> Last point is righteousness is the result of our faith in God through yes. Christ. That's right. So that's all it takes for us to be right with God. I don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops, do a bunch of things right. All they have to do is have faith in God, faith in, in God that he sent his son to die for me. Right. Um, Verse 22 says this, that is why faith was counted to him as righteousness, which is from Genesis 15, 6. And that he says, and he believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. But here's the really good news. Okay, so, oh, great. Abraham's made righteous. 
but it also says, but the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also, Amen. right? For ours also. Um, I'm righteous. I've been made righteous. Unbelievable, right? Isn't that an unbelievable truth? Let's, let's say it to ourselves. I am righteous. Through Christ, that's right. In the Lord's eyes. That's right. Through faith, gives us grace. <laughs> Want to go back into that one again? I don't think <laughs> it, actually, we're not going backwards. So, but the words that counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but ours also. So our righteousness is the result of our faith in Christ. It, it, our faith is in God through Christ, right? Because he's the one that he sent Christ down for us. We have faith in, in both and the Holy Spirit that comes in to live with it, in us. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. Raised from the dead, Jesus our Lord, is the actually right, correct rendering. Who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised up for our justification. So the same thing that happens with us is the same thing that happened to Abraham. When we embrace and believe the one who brought Jesus to life, when the conditions were equally hopeless, right? Belief in Jesus, death and resurrection made us fit for God, set us right with God. We have to believe that though. We have to live in that. Um, it says, was delivered up for our trespasses and raised us for our justification. Justification, the act of God's declaring men free from guilt and acceptable to him. I like this other one right here. The establishment of a person as just by acquittal from guilt. That's what we get. It's just amazing. Um, man. And you know, it's fitting today that we get to do communion because we, we have to remember why am I made justified? Why am I justified? Why am I made righteous? Because of what Jesus did for me, my faith in that. So today we're going to celebrate that. And as we do that, Let's really think about where we were before God got a hold of us, before we put our faith in Christ, where we were and where he's got us now. That ought to make us really get on our knees and cry. It does me because of the changes that God's made. Um, and I hope that if anybody has not experienced that, that you would experience this. Only takes belief. Um, and not belief in yourself, belief in him. Father, um, thank you for your word, Father. Um, it, it is it is like a two-edged sword, Lord. Your word cuts right to the heart. And so, Lord, as we think about these things, as we go home, go home during the week, and we catch ourselves trying to live up to your standards, Lord, help us to just get on our knees, surrender that to you, give you the faith so that you can make the changes in us, Lord. Um, I thank you that um, you've equipped me to teach your word, Lord. And um, I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Um, so I, I remember when I was a little kid, uh, my my mother. Uh, uh, I grew up in a Baptist church. Uh, I can remember at a very early age, probably five or six or something like that, um, being aware of communion, and. Uh, my mom told me that um, I couldn't participate, and she didn't explain it to me at that point, but I didn't have a problem with it. But the one thing I became very aware of was how much, um, how, how the, the whole demeanor of the, of the congregation changed. There was such a sense of reverence and awe when they celebrated communion in that church. And I really realized even then that this was something very special. I didn't understand exactly what, why it was so special, but there was no question that it was held uh, in great reverence. And uh, some years later, um, when Joanne and I were living in the East Bay, um, we started going to um, uh, Catholic Mass on Sunday nights at All Saints over in Hayward, downtown Hayward. It's a beautiful old cathedral and we originally started going there because they had incredible music in this place but um, that was the first time I had really experienced um, the Eucharist 
And again, I was struck by what, with what great reverence they approached that. Now, I don't believe in transubstination, but on that aside, I, it, was, it was just such a sense of reverence. And, you know, there's quite a ritual involved in the, in the Catholic Church, but it's okay. It's appropriate. Um, it's a sacred, sacred um, ceremony. One of the things I thought was interesting uh, was they had a huge um, crucifix behind the altar. And um, they had a, the Jesus on this crucifix was detachable. And at, at Easter time, at Lent, they would take him down at the beginning of Lent. But unfortunately, they would put him back up there when Lent was over. And I always thought, that's so strange. I mean, our, uh, and, uh, you know, our Jesus is not, this is what, this is our cross. Jesus is gone from there. And, you know, that's the whole message. Um, and I'm not really being critical of Catholicism because it has a lot to offer, but it was always odd to me that uh, we left Jesus on the cross. The whole message is that he's not on this anymore. And he only did it once. You know, we didn't put him back up there again, time and time again, um, like they did after Lynn. So, uh, you know, the point is that this, um, this ritual, and I talked last week about rituals, uh, the rituals of baptism, the rituals of circumcision, the, the, the uh, ritual of communion, should not just be ritualistic. Maybe it's not even appropriate to use that term. This has to be approached with a whole sense of, uh, of awe and a sense of reverence towards what this really represents. So uh, let's look at the scripture today from 1 Corinthians um, <clears throat> about communion. And Paul um, is points out here that he learned uh, about this uh, through, uh, through the, uh, the ministry of Jesus Christ and was passing it on to the early Christians in the churches that he was uh, in, identified with. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. And then verse 28, um, in the various versions of the Lord's uh, Supper, this is the only place that that appears is in the first Corinthians version, but I think this is a great add-on. It says, let a person examine himself, then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And I think that's really uh, something that um, we, we ought to do. Uh, this is an opportunity. Maybe it's an opportunity for repentance. Maybe it's an opportunity for praise. Uh, thanking uh, God once again for the gift of his son. So um, as we uh, participate in this this morning, um, I'm going to let you take the elements at your, um, at your leisure. But uh, let me just uh, offer a word of prayer as we enter into this. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we celebrate today the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's no wonder that we approach this with great reverence, great awe, because of the power and might of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we pray that as we enter into this today, that we will approach you um, and examine ourselves and praise you for all of your incredible gifts and uh, to thank you once again for the unbelievable sacrifice of your Son. And we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen.
Okay, we have uh, some time this morning for some sharing. Um, I just want to reiterate um, kind of what the rules are and kind of what this is intended for, because uh, there is a method to our madness. I think um, we have, uh, you should uh, we really want to uh, keep it down to uh, no more than two minutes, uh, because we want to get as, uh, as many people in as possible. Also, um, you know, really ideally, this should be an opportunity to comment on Bruce's teaching, uh, particularly um, as it may have related specifically to you and specifically to your walk with Jesus. And uh, so this is an opportunity for us to do that. And um, I think that that's the primary reason that we do this is so that we can reflect on the teaching that we have, uh, we have heard this morning. So uh, please do not um, start speaking until William is there with the mic. And I believe that uh, Dave Milano is uh, going to share something with us. Yes, good morning. Uh, I just want to thank Bruce for this message. It was so powerful and so, so true. I mean, it's just unbelievably amazing. You know, when I cried out of my room and I said, God, help me, you know, it wasn't a cry. It wasn't a yell. It was just I felt that, that brokenness. I felt that emptiness. I felt spiritually dead. You know, they talk about institutions and you know, jails, institutions of death. And I was, I felt, I was dead. I was done. And when I, when I said, God help me, when I said, God help me, I, I sensed something because I really meant it this time from my heart. I've never been so broken and so empty that uh, I need a new life. And he has given me new life. Yeah, that's one of the shortest and most commonly uttered prayers is God help me <laughs> all of all, we've all done that one at one time or another what else William yeah I, I totally agree and, and totally relate Dave um, I tried to do a lot of things on my own and I even told God I don't need your help yeah I, I told him that he, he did the same thing he laughed <laughs> but after he let me suffer and I came back wholeheartedly on my knees and asked him for help he was right there you betcha. Right there. Amen. You bet. Tom. Anybody? Wait. You got Tom. He's messing with me. Anybody? Oh, he is? Oh, he doesn't want you to. Oh, wow. Um, These guys are tough. <laughs> hey, he's got the microphone, so you know, right. he's in control. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've heard a couple of very short prayers. You know, another very short prayer that, that I give once I have those other prayers, God help me, and, and is, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. That's an important one. Speak a little doggy wants to speak. You want to speak too? All right. Speak, Connor. Go ahead. Tell us your story. Come on, tell us your story. I just wanted to say, um, we had my niece's uh, funeral service over Zoom yesterday afternoon and uh, my niece Carrie she was only 43 years old she died of cancer she was a devout Jehovah Witness as was my um, my sister-in-law so I just want to say if any Jehovah Witnesses come to your house knocking on the doors please they are doing this because they have to they don't know the truth like we know it today so they are dear each one of them is dear to God and they're just messed up they've just been taught something false so please love them um, give them a glass of water or uh, share with them what you know because it could be my sister-in-law or one of my nephews that go every Saturday knocking on doors how hard I mean I've had jobs where I've had to go knock on doors that is not fun and yet I was able to quit they are not able to quit lest they will be shunned and actually kicked out of their church so please be merciful to any Jehovah Witnesses or Mormons or anyone in other cults it's just they need to know the truth Amen. Amen. I, uh, I know I talk too much today, 
but that's good thing that that means I like you uh, I, <laughs> I feel I'm safe I feel part of this ministry I feel the love and acceptance and the warmth and uh, thank you so much and uh, about Abraham when when God changed his name Abraham the father of nations so this guy's anybody ask him what's your name Abraham father of nations father of nations this is his name so as as God did with us we are uh, when I uh, we introduce ourselves we are children of God I'm a child of God so he 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 put that uh, when he changed his name he just remind him all the time with the promise as we reminded all that we are children of God no matter what happened and Abraham is not a saint he lied he he was fearful he went to Egypt so this is what I love about God is not that we are perfect but we are really willing to follow this Lord and to be uh, faithful children praise God thanks Joe and we like you too so feeling is mutual anybody else All right. Um, anyway, um, I hope everyone here um, is uh, looking forward to uh, uh, the Thanksgiving as I am. And I hope we uh, put it to good use, that we use it as a day and opportunity to praise God and to thank him for all of his, uh, all of his gifts and all of his blessings. So uh, I want to uh, thank the worship team again for their music this morning. Um, and uh, uh, Bruce for his uh, wonderful message this morning. And uh, whoever uh, drugged the coffee and stuff out this morning, thank you very much for that. So um, let, me, uh, let me close out the service in a word of prayer. Our, our gracious Heavenly Father, uh, as we approach Thanksgiving, uh, let us uh, uh, be thankful. And let us be thankful for all the all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us and be thankful for the reason that we are uh, we are in faith and that is uh, the gift of your uh, son jesus on the cross of calvary and we're, we thank you this morning that he is not on the cross anymore that he rules um, in, and uh, reigns supreme we ask those things in jesus name amen, amen.